Hello my friends and a very warm welcome back to my painting channel and in this video I'm going to be painting Marvin Branner. Uh, this is the lieutenant from the police station. He is also a model in the Resident Evil 2 board game and you might remember the character from the video game itself. And Marvin is one of my uh, sort of all time favourite characters um, in the Resident Evil kind of genre uh, and series of games because He's quite a cool character and he's quite a decent bloke as well from what you can gather um, and I believe his backstory is that he was bitten trying to save people so he's uh, a regular sort of hero as well and a really really cool character to boot. So we're going to start by painting the skin skin, and in this one we're going to start with a dark rust from Vallejo. This is one of my favourite colours to base uh, some really sort of dark brown uh, colours um, with Marvin, Marvin his um, skin colour is quite dark so with this we're going to use the dark rust as a base coat and then we're going to start to build up from there. It's really cool to be able to paint something uh, with a little bit of a different uh, skin tone because a lot of the models on my channel seem to be using a lot of the same sort of skin recipes and the same skin tones. So it's going to be really cool to do something that is completely different. Now, once the dark rust has dried, we're going to move on to use the uh, pastel blue from Vallejo, and we're just going to paint the police uniform with this. Um, the cool thing with this character is he's wearing a very iconic sort of um, 90s style uh, American police uniform and it's gonna look really really cool as we build those colors and tones back up it's gonna look really cool it's gonna have this iconic feel to it it's gonna make the character really sort of stand out against like the zombies and all things like that as well so using that pastel uh, pastel blue sorry we're just gonna uh, paint across the shirt and I'm gonna use the dark blue gray to do the trousers as well I had a little bit of trouble with the one side of the trousers here as you can see I've just got a little bit of a problem with the the mold line I tried to remove the mold line and then it, it sort of went a little bit bad and made a bit of a, 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 a sort of mess on the leg but it doesn't matter because I'm gonna paint over it and he's gonna be used to be uh, played with and things like that anyway for the game so he's not gonna be a massive display piece so it doesn't matter too much. We're just going to take our time to cover the trousers with this colour. From there, there are two um, sort of badges on the shoulders. Um, so we're just using a gold brown because these are kind of like a yellow colour, but they're not actual gold. So because the models are really, really small, it would be very, very difficult to mix different colours in with these to have like the whites and the golds and things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just using this gold. Uh, this gold brown color and by the time we place the wash on this this is going to pick out some of the details for us and it's going to do the job for us without needing to be too extreme from then I'm just using the tenebrous gray now what I'd normally say with this if you don't use the AK set so if you don't have a tenebrous gray any kind of black would do great you could use the uh, model color black from Vallejo and that has a really good sort of matte dry down effect and pretty much with this I'm going to paint the shoes and I'm also going to paint all of the things like the belt and the utensils like his torch. I'm also going to paint the pistol handle, the pistol grip as well. Um, and what we're going to do later is we're just going to pick out a very fine edge of the pistol grip so that it looks like the light is just catching on the edge um, just to separate it from uh, the pouches and things like that. And I'm also going to paint the hair as well in the same colour. Um, just so that this ties everything in together and I try to be as careful as possible not to get this onto each other with the, the base colors but it doesn't matter too much because we'll build them up later anyway from there with the actual badge I'm gonna paint that gold and uh, again with one of my favorite colors so this is Retributor armor from Citadel this is a really good sort of um, brassy kind of gold um, so this works really really well in multiple um, different roles then we're going to go on and use gunmetal. This is a really cool sort of dark silver colour. So this isn't going to be too bright, but it just has that, that little bit of a shine and just enough of a sparkle for us to be able to get a few silver things done. Now Marvin is wearing a cool little wristwatch here. So you could paint that black if you wanted to, if you don't want to go too extreme on the detail. All I'm going to do with this is just paint it um, silver. Um, and then I'm just going to use the wash to do the rest so that this darkens it down and it just creates a little bit of a subtle uh, shine from the silver which is going to be perfect. I'm also going to paint the little buttons in silver as well uh, because again when the wash goes over this this is going to tie these in together and it's going to give just that tiny little shine and that tiny little hint of detail without it being too bright and catching your eye too much so it's just about that subtle colour so that's what we're doing. Now moving on to zombie uh, Marvin, 
um, with Zombie Marvin. He has a few little cuts and scrapes and sort of openings on his arms where the skin is uh, has been sort of torn apart. So for this one, I'm just using the Carmine Red here. And I'm just painting this into those gaps and I'm just trying to get the redness to show through. Now later we will paint sort of the, uh, the blood effects and the technical effects over the top. Uh, but at the moment, that's all we're doing is just creating that sort of base layer for ourselves to build up from a little bit later anyway. Again, I'm trying to be quite careful with this. I don't want to mix the colors together, but it doesn't matter too much at this stage because it's easily to fix. I'm also just going to use a small amount of off-white. Now with off-white, again, if you don't have the AK Interactive, you could always use something like the Dead White from Vallejo that I use quite often. They're very, very similar colors, both really vibrant and they're both great for this sort of thing. And that's all I'm going to do with this one is I'm just going to paint the vest and I'm also just going to paint that eyeball that's popping out a little bit on Zombie Marvin 2. So as you can see, just painting that little vest on the inside. Now normally I would paint the vest first because it is the harder to reach area, um, but it doesn't matter too much because it's only a very small part. And that completes all of the base colors. So that's all of the base colors and base tones done. And from there, we're just gonna cover these in a shade of uh, Citadel's Null Nile. So this is a flat black wash. So you can use any flat black wash that you like. Um, for this one, I've opted for the Citadel, the Null Nile. This is a really good go-to shade because this is quite watery. So this moves and is able to be manipulated around the model quite well. Shading uh, models is also one of my favorite things to do because when you paint the model, you get to see a few of the details. But once you place a shade onto it, you get to see all those folds coming through on the cloth and it shows through on sort of the dynamic uh, pose of the character and you get to see sort of a lot more of the details that maybe you didn't see before. And I absolutely love this part of uh, the painting process. It's one of my favorites. So we're gonna go back onto the dark rust now and we're gonna build our skin tone up. So what we're gonna do with the skin tone is just gonna go back to the original color because we've used a black wash, that's gonna to tone down some of the color and it's gonna take some of that uh, vibrance out of the brown. So with the dark rust, although it's already a dark brown, uh, it does have a really cool sort of um, subtle reddy color to it. Um, so by using the wash on this, that's gonna to tone that down and create sort of like a black color, especially in between sort of the eyes and, and just around the neck area and things like that. So we're just gonna build the base color back up by using that dark rust. So we're just gonna follow along and we're gonna leave the, the, the black sort of in the recessed areas. We're gonna leave that pool uh, where it's pooled in sort of like the detail points. And then we're just gonna pick up the raised areas. As you can see with the arm, there's a few areas where there's a little bit of uh, muscle density and things like that. From there then we're just gonna go and we're gonna mix a little bit of flat brown into the dark rust. Now flat brown, again, sticking with that sort of reddy brown sort of um, color. This is a really cool color where you've got a very subtle, uh, small amount of redness to it. So this creates a little bit of warmth and creates a little bit more tone to that brown. And what I would suggest doing with this is, as I would normally say with other things, is building this up in small stages, so less is more. So you start with your dark rust and you just add a very small, uh, blob of the flat brown and then bit by bit you can tone that up depending on how vibrant you want this redness and how vibrant you want this color to show through on the skin tones as you can see I'm just using a very subtle small amount at the moment um, I'm using probably about 25% uh, 30% so I've used about three blobs of the dark rust for one blob of the flat brown and you can already see that red vibrance sort of coming through in the color and again, this is something that you can build up as you go. So you can build multiple layers of this as you go. And you can also add a little bit more of that flat brown into it as you go as well. I would avoid going straight for flat brown uh, on top of that dark rust. I would always make sure to mix them first because if you go straight to that flat brown, it's a different color. So the tone might be a little bit too extreme and you might end up with too much of a red brown rather than a subtle transition. So by using the dark rust and the flat brown mixed together, you get a subtle red um, transition that then you can pick out very specific areas like the nose, the cheeks, especially the cheeks. You get that little redness and that little bit of a, a color transition on the, the cheeks there as well. And that makes it perfect. So we're also then gonna move on uh, to using the, the pastel blue again from Vallejo. And we're just gonna do this on the shirt. Now, 
I'm going to do a little bit of a, a, a longer sort of show of what I'm doing on the shirt just to give you an idea as to how I'm building this color back up. Now don't forget with all of these it is important to make sure that your paints are nice and thin so that they move onto the miniature nice and evenly. So again I always like to add sort of one blob water to one blob paint so just to make sure that my paints are nice and fluid, they smooth, they move onto the miniature nicely and they also then dry down really nicely um, and have a very very sort of um, like sort of really good um, kind of like blend to them so as they dry they don't have too much of an extreme contrast they kind of take a little bit of the underneath color with them as well when they dry and this creates that that definition of depth and highlight in without it looking too garish the worst thing you can do is just go straight back to the original color and then without watering it down just place blobs of it onto your model because then you're not having that subtle transition that I spoke about earlier um, and this is why watering down your paints is important. It also allows your paints to last longer on your brush as well so as you can see I'm manipulating and moving the paint quite a bit with this but I'm also able to use it for quite a long period of time before I need to go back and add more to the brush. And as you can see what I'm doing here is I'm just allowing, just the same as I said earlier with the face, just allowing that, that sort of black wash to sit down in those sort of creases while I build up the folds and the raised areas and the areas where I think the light is going to catch this shirt. And as you can see those iconic colours are now starting to show through and we're starting to get a lot more detail and depth to the model as well which is really really awesome. Again if you wanted to you could add a little bit of white to that just to highlight further uh, but for me I'm keeping it in this sort of like comic booky style kind of thing uh, just because it adds a little bit to the, the iconic character and the old fashioned sort of way of looking at the, uh, the 90s style cop vibe uh, which is perfect for me. So I'm going to move back onto the trousers then and we're going to go back to using that dark grey and in exactly the same way as you can see I'm just using uh, the tip of my brush and I'm just following on the lines but I'm just trying to leave areas where that wash has sat and the good thing with this is because we're using a black wash onto a dark grey as we build this dark grey back up you're going to have again that subtle transition so the areas where the um, the shade is, is sat in those sort of folds and in those creases you build in the depth and you get in the detail out of the model without doing too much work as well you're not having to go uh, crazy with it and, and you know it, it most of the work is done for you from the shading process and that's one of the reasons why I enjoy the shading process so much is if you pick the right color shade for the job um, you can do so much when you're building those colors back up by using the shade underneath so again, with this nice thin down grey paint, this is smoothly drying onto the miniature and building that colour back up. Now again, if you wanted to push the colour further, you can push this then by using a, a lighter grey in with it. I wouldn't go full blown white because you'll lighten the grey way, way too much and by doing that, you might end up with a completely different colour on the trousers. Again, I'm trying to keep this as close to the source material as possible, so I want it to look like the video game character, and I want those colours to be quite iconic. So, whereas we painted the um, the belts and things with the black or the tenebrous grey, I'm then moving on to using the German grey from Vallejo, and again, this is a very sort of subtly sort of blue grey. It's a dark colour, but it has a really sort of interesting colour blue to it, and this is going to add. A little bit of a difference in those grey tones between the trousers and the belt and the shoes and it's also going to stop everything from being like flat black so it's giving your eye something more to look at and pulling your, your, your sort of sight into different things as well showing off a few more of the details so I'm using uh, a small amount of this um, silver grey and I'm using this as I said earlier just to pick out the very 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 tip of the pistol so that this looks like there's a little bit of light just catching on the edge of the pistol and I'm also doing the same thing just across the torch here um, or a flashlight if you're in the States and I'm just painting uh, a little bit on the front of the torch as well uh, you could pick different colors if you wanted to be yellow or orange or white or anything like that I mean that's completely up to you but I painted the uh, the first part yellow and then I picked out a little bit more of the detail with white so that it gave this sort of subtle hint of warmth coming through that white as well 
And then moving back on to uh, Zombie Marvin, we're also then just going to add some more of the red. So we're moving on to the bloody red now here, um, and we're just going to build that redness back up. This is a nice, vibrant, bright red, so this is going to make the redness underneath really pop and really stand out. So we've got that, that darker red originally, and then we're just going to build up this much lighter, much nicer, brighter red colour, as you can see. Um, and then later we're going to add a little bit of the uh, technical colors as well and, and create sort of like a really sort of bloody defect and things like that. So I'm just tracing around a little bit of the face where I can see some of the details and some of the cuts and things like where the damage has been caused. And as I said, moving just on to the blood from the blood god, the technical paint, I'm just going to use this in a very quick stippling motion, so just using the very tip of the brush. And I'm just using this as a stippling motion across the areas where he has cuts, but I'm also adding a subtle little bit onto the shirt and things like that as well, just to add to that character as well. The cool thing with having bright light colours like the white and the light pastel blue on the shirt is when you dab this red on, it really, really does pop. So it kind of gives your eyes something to look at and drags you to it. Now, as I said earlier, I'm not going to go back over like things like the silver or the gold or anything like that. I'm leaving the wash do its work on these, so it makes it a really quick and easy, uh, simple sort of paint job. And all in all, I'm really happy with how it's come out, I'm really happy with the skin tones. I love the iconic, iconic look of the, uh, the outfit as well, the police outfit. And I'd like to take time just to say a special thanks to a few of my uh, viewers. Uh, Mohawks and Tomahawks, you've been absolutely awesome. Michael Virtuoso as well, you guys are the best um, you always add a positive spin to the channel and give me something to work on as well teddy made me do it in my really good friend johnny's always always positive and gives me a lot of cool stuff to do uh, the hobby grotto as well which is a cool guy that i've made friends with on here from australia he has an awesome channel full of really great trips tips so if you haven't checked them out before i'd suggest doing it as soon as possible so you'll have to let me know in the comments what you think and if you're happy and if you think it looks cool and as always my friends thank you so much for tuning in and watching i'll see you on the next one